Hey guys, it's Kronos, and today we're going to learn how to pick the best fee for your Bitcoin transaction. The Bitcoin network has become more and more congested recently, so it's no longer always the best idea to just accept whatever fee is suggested by your wallet software. Sometimes that plan will have you spending way more than you need to for your transaction. Instead, I like to take a look at a snapshot of a Bitcoin node's memory pool to get an idea of what fee would make sense. If that was a little too much jargon for you, don't worry, I'll walk you through it. Let's get started. There are a couple of great websites that give you some insight into the fee situation on the Bitcoin network, but one that I like to use is this one here. It's bitcoinfees.earn.com, and it'll come up as one of the top search results if you search the internet for Bitcoin fees. So what are we looking at here? The first thing you're going to notice is the scale on the left. This is how many Satoshis per byte people are willing to pay to get their transactions processed. A Satoshi is a very, very small portion of Bitcoin, and a byte is a very, very small measurement of the size of a Bitcoin transaction. And I don't mean size as in the amount of Bitcoin that's being sent. It's actually size as in the number of addresses that are being sent from and to in the transaction. So that's an interesting thing to keep in mind as well. Sending more Bitcoin doesn't require more fees. Instead, sending Bitcoin from more addresses requires more fees. So at the top of the chart here, we see the lowest fees possible, 1 to 10 Satoshis per byte. And the orange bar represents how many transactions are currently waiting to be processed that are paying this amount of fees. A whopping 41 1,000 transactions are waiting, and those probably won't be processed because this is a auction-based system where the higher bidders, the people who are willing to pay more in fees, are going to be processed first. So all of these other transactions are processed first. The right columns here, the delay in blocks and the delay in minutes, gives you an idea of how long you'll need to wait to get the transaction processed. And you can see INF or infinity on some of these ranges because, yeah, let's be honest, that might never get processed. So the orange part represents transactions that are waiting across the entire network. But the blue part gives us a nice snapshot of what's recently been happening on the network. This is the number of transactions that have joined the memory pool in the last 24 hours. So it kind of tells you what people have been paying recently on the Bitcoin network. So let's scroll down to the section with the higher fees. You can see all of these are orange bars. When we get way down here to the high price area, you'll actually see the bars turn yellow, which represents transactions that will be processed more quickly. And then the green section is transactions that are at the front of the queue that will probably be processed in the next block. So if you're using your Bitcoin wallet software to estimate a fee, it's very possible that if you choose fast priority transaction, it's going to give you something in the green area and it will probably get processed in the next block. But if you choose normal or low priority, it's still going to choose something in this range, something in the orange range to be processed in the next couple blocks, or something in the red range. But as you can see, if you look at this chart, you could save a lot of money on fees by looking at the whole chart instead of just the very tip. If I'm running a transaction that I want to be processed very quickly, I'm going to choose something in this green range, probably about 381 Satoshis per byte. But if it's not an urgent transaction and I'm willing to wait a couple hours, I'm not going to choose something in the orange area. And I'm not going to choose something in this red area, because when a Bitcoin block is mined, it could knock all of these transactions back and process them all the way back to this area, 111 to 120 Satoshis per byte. Why is this? Well, there's an interesting aspect of the Bitcoin network, which is that Bitcoin blocks are not mined on a regular schedule. On average, they're mined every 10 minutes, but it's completely random. You could have an hour go by with just one block mined, or you could have a couple of blocks mined in a single minute. Because of that, if you pay a fee that's up in this area, like 100 Satoshis per byte, and you wait, it's quite likely that eventually there are going to be a cluster of blocks mined suddenly and all at once, which can wipe out the memory pool and process transactions very quickly. So if you're waiting behind these other transactions and then you hit that lucky patch, you could see the whole memory pool get cleaned out and your transaction does get processed. So if I'm processing a transaction and this is the chart that I'm looking at, I would probably pay 111 Satoshis per byte, because all of these transactions are behind me, and I have just these transactions that are in front of me. And if I see two blocks mined in a row, or three blocks mined quickly, my transaction will likely get in. Considering the savings in fees versus paying something in the green section of this chart, that wait could definitely be worth it. One last note is that this scale is in Satoshis per byte, which might not make sense for you depending on the wallet software that you're using. If your wallet software isn't giving you a choice in Satoshis per byte, but rather asking you for your entire fee, then you need to know how many bytes your transaction is. You can also change this drop down instead of Satoshis per byte to choose Bitcoin per byte here, which can give you another angle. So let's say your transaction is 224 bytes, which is a typical transaction that's coming from one address and going to two addresses. 
addresses. And I want to pay this fee, about 110 Satoshis per byte. Well, that's 0 0.000001 Bitcoins per byte in the transaction. So if I multiply this number by 224, which is the number of bytes in the transaction, that tells me how many Bitcoin I should type in as a fee. Using this trick can help you figure out just how much you should pay in fees without paying too much. So once again, take a look at this website, bitcoinfees.earn.com. This is what I do every time I'm sending a Bitcoin transaction. You can often save a lot of money. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.